Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Harika. So in today's video, I'm going to answer one of the questions that I've got from uh, one of my subscribers. So, um, so basically UiPath forms in UiPath forms, we are, uh, you all know that we are using trigger based or tended automation. So his question is very much brilliant because it talks about what's happening behind the activities. So it usually, you know, whenever you're using the activities as it is, you cannot uh, understand them. Uh, you know what's happening behind and why we are using those activities only at certain place so this question is so good and so brilliant uh, and I would really wanted to explain you by making a video because you know uh, if you understand why we are using those activity and where we are placing those activities then definitely you can understand the whole concept and you can use the way that you work on your platforms okay so he's asking basically we are using a run local trigger and stop trigger in main file only but not using in other XAML. so why is it that way and you know uh, would that be enough if you place it there so yeah definitely I'm going to answer this question with the demo that I have already created so let's go there let's go to studio so here if you see uh, i'm actually utilizing the same form that i have shown in the previous video which is shopping cart form so this is my form uh, and you know as and when i click on increase it's going to increase the item in the cart and decrease would decrease the items in the cart so yeah let's understand the functionality okay so firstly as a as a you know user if i am clicking on it so the firstly the form will be opening up right so let's go step by step what was the first step a form should be shown up and after that uh you know my bot should monitor the form okay it should be monitoring based on the actions that i perform on the form it has to trigger right the event has to be triggered so let's say in this form if i'm clicking on increase that's an event okay uh, that event will be triggered okay if i click on decrease that is another event okay that will be triggered if i click on submit that's a third event right so we are talking about multiple events here one is increase decrease and submit right so these three event any event can be triggered right so I, I don't know, I may click increase, you may click decrease or someone want to just close the form, right? So based on that, uh, you know, my bot has to take the action. So it has to keep on monitoring all the triggers that we have. So basically what all the triggers that we have here, we have increase trigger, decrease trigger, and also we have submit trigger. So let me open that also. Submit trigger, okay? right we have three different triggers so bot should monitor everything so that is why we are having run local triggers in the main file okay so as as soon as the form shows up we will have this trigger so what exactly this uh, uh, is doing i will show you in the debug mode okay so let me debug it i'll show you clearly what is there inside this uh, activity okay what functionality is there so i'm doing step into okay so form is shown up okay and after that what has to happen the bot will monitor the different triggers for that the bot should keep on running right so this local triggers should keep on running so for that what i'm doing i'm doing a step into so if you see here i'm clicking on continue okay so if you see the bot is running here okay the bot is keep on checking what trigger is activated which trigger is uh, you know hit so inside this run local triggers we have this much built in okay so we have a parallel activity which will be monitoring all the triggers so if you see here we have multiple sequences for each triggers for all the triggers that we have built we have multiple trigger uh, sequences okay so all these sequences will be monitored by the bot okay so these are the multiple sequences that we have so everything is under a, uh, like every trigger is under a sequence so as soon as this trigger is hit you know if if this trigger is activated so then you know it goes into this particular action and all the actions inside the triggers are uh, you know performed sequentially so if you see the trigger scope here there will be a mode okay this is a sequential mode so this this is too much in depth uh, basically you can just check by you you know like using some trigger scope activities how sequential would work how concurrent would work how one time would work so it is it is uh, 
you know uh, a different concept i would tell you maybe in a different video but you know basically sequential is means one after the other you can say okay so as soon as this trigger is hit this particular actions are executed and what happens like you know this again this will be checking for other other triggers so like uh, let me just do one thing i'll show you here i have clicked on increase so this was monitoring till now right and it has activated that particular action and one has been done so now it's not done right it's not yet done maybe i don't want to um, uh, make it one i want to decrease it so another trigger has run and it has made zero so you know this particular activity which i have showed you let me close this and this run local trigger this will be keep on running till when this will be keep on monitoring because this is in the parallel right so till when this will be keep on happening until this condition which is stop stop trigger variable so where is this stop trigger variable if you see um i have kept the stop trigger variable in the submit trigger okay let me get that so in the stop local triggers we have okay let me let me go here okay so let's do keep a break point here okay so what i'm going to do in the form i'm going to click submit so form got closed and after that what happened um acha this is in uh, this is the submit trigger for another form okay so let me show you that as well this is not uh, my submit trigger i'll open another submit trigger because we had multiple triggers in the same right so that's why it's confusing it's not a best practice don't do that keep it separately and aligned i just created it this way for uh, you know the demo so this is counter form okay this is shopping cart okay let me the break point here okay so now what i'm going to do i'm going to debug again not this file okay cancel debug mm why so i think it's clear like why we are doing that run in the main because as soon as the form shows up we want uh, the triggers uh, you know it want it should monitor everything in the form what is happening in the form it should be monitored right so that's why we have kept that here okay so it will be monitoring it will be going into as soon as i click on increase that particular trigger will be activated and actions inside that okay so if you see here um so yeah so that particular trigger will be activated and it will be shown uh, it will be uh, you know action inside that will be performed in the same way when you click on decrease the same thing will happen yeah here it is the triggers so this will be this trigger will be activated and this will be gone so let's say uh, i'm having so here see here this is the decrease right so here this is this is happening this particular function is happening okay so it will happen that way so now let's go to the stop thing uh stop button okay so i'm clicking on submit so where is my submit to i have my break point here right so i will go here and i will click on submit so what will happen uh, sorry i should hit on continue okay uh, i think form got closed because i clicked on submit right i don't want to confuse you here but i will show you one last time okay close all the unwanted things so let's run the workflow whole uh, and i'll show you 
so we have seen increase and decrease and now okay so it's going and increasing it's decreasing okay so now i am hitting on submit so it will take me here right so if you see here I'm clicking on uh, step into, okay. It has stopped the local triggers, okay. That means it will send the signal, okay, that uh, these particular, uh, whatever the triggers are there, that are closed, okay. So in that case, what will happen? Whatever the triggers that are uh, active, that uh, the stop signal will be sent, just like should stop something that we, we are using, right? So in the same way, it will send the signal. All the local triggers would be stopped and it will close the workflow. It will stop the workflow. So if you see here, it has sent the signal, okay? So we, we are telling that we have clicked the submit, right? So go into submit, submit trigger got clicked. So here, if you see, we have listen for stop, stop triggers, right? So that is what we have in the uh, stop trigger okay so here this is the one and it will assign the boolean value what is the boolean value so this is the thing okay so it will assign a boolean value which is true for stop triggers variable so we have seen right the parallel will execute until the condition what is the condition which is stop trigger variable so this parallel will be keep on executing until that is true so where we have that we have that in the stop trigger okay stop local triggers so that is there we have kept after doing the submission so that is how it will be following so let me show you what is happening so after uh, let's come manually so as soon as the form shows up we want it to see all the triggers that are happening so that's why we have kept uh, in the main show the form and then we we want it to monitor everything so increase decrease and submit so what are the different triggers that we have we have kept everything so each trigger we have seen that will be inside a trigger scope and once after it event is triggered that particular action will be happening so for increase and decrease we won't we don't want the form to be closed right so that's why we didn't kept any stop uh stop triggers and but for submit once after we submit we want the form to be closed that's why we kept the stop and this stop will be triggering this particular event this event this sequence will be triggered by the stop okay so this will assign this variable which is true which is true and that will be triggering the parallel activity and all the triggers will be stopped. So that is how the functionality is. This is behind the uh, particular activities that we are using. I hope it is clear. If not, please do let me know in the comments and also if it is helpful, that uh, please do mention that it is clear for you. And also uh, I felt this is very much interesting concept because this is uh, something like inner engineering. So I felt this is very much interesting when even I when I I was exploring the forms for the first time even i was confused what is this activity because i that activity i was using for the first time and i didn't know what is happening behind even i had to put it in the debug mode and monitor what is happening and how it is happening so I should say, Rizwan, you have asked a brilliant question and uh, whoever is watching this video, whoever have got this question and if it is helpful for you, please do let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching. I would come back with so many great videos and useful content. So do like the videos and subscribe to my channel so you will not miss any future videos. Thank you so much for watching.